What's up and welcome to my final summer review of the Legion Pro 5i. We've got a whole bunch of things to talk about and I can't wait to talk about it. This laptop did amazing in so many different ways. Now this laptop is powered by the Intel i7-13700HX along with the NVIDIA RTX 4070 with eight gigs of RAM. Yes, that can be a little bit of a bottleneck. 16 gigs of DDR5, 4800 memory, one terabyte PCIe SSD, depending on the config. I think the unit I actually got was 512 gig. The 16 inch 2560 by 1600 QHD plus resolution display. And you can get it with a 240 hertz 500 nits display with 100% sRGB or a 165 hertz 300 nits display. As you'll see later today, it actually tested higher than 300 nits. The port selection is pretty dang good, but we do not have Thunderbolt 4, which is one of the downsides, I think, uh, for this laptop. 90 watt hour battery, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.1, a 1080 webcam, uh, you'll see how good it is here in a moment. Five and a half pounds, this thing's fairly portable, can fit in a backpack pretty easily, but it's not necessarily designed for ultra portability. The quick pros and cons of this laptop is that it, it provides some phenomenal bang for the buck and great internal combination of cooling. You know, mostly metal chassis, good enough trackpad, good enough keyboard, pretty good display, not quite as good a color gamut and contrast, but it was very bright at 384 nits, um, depending on which color checker tool we used. But yeah, strong hinge, sturdy build, good port selection, not perfect, we'll get into that. Overall, great value, especially when it's on sale, especially when it's on sale, but still pretty dang good value, even when it's at full price. Now I got to give a big shout out and thank you to Lenovo and Intel for sending over the Legion Pro 5i and sponsoring this episode. What does that mean? Well, I'm still going to be testing this laptop exactly the same as I test every other laptop with all of these same tests. I'm still going to give you my honest opinion about everything. It's literally written in the contract that I can be honest about all the pros and cons of the Legion Pro 5i. The key things that are different about the sponsorship is that I'm prioritizing the Legion laptop compared to say uh, other products because I only have so much time to be able to review products. And then in the video description down below, I'm exclusively linking to the Lenovo page, which is one of the best places to buy a Lenovo laptop from since they have a good return policy and usually some of the cheapest prices, especially if you get a great coupon deal. Okay. Unboxing this laptop is simple. It has a basic box. Lenovo did not charge you extra for a fancy box. They put it all the value into the computer, which is great. A power adapter, 300 watts and kind of larger on the larger side, especially since we don't really need more than say 240 watts for this entire system. Even when we're running at max load in dead space, we still only pull 200 watts on the CPU GPU combined together, plus additional other system load. That said, 300 watts is nice in the sense that it will probably last longer as a power brick and get less heated because it's not being pushed to the thermal limit of the power adapter. So that, that's good. I don't know, not really too worried about that but the downside is it's larger you know this guy is not a small power brick it is kind of thin though so that's nice quality control on the laptop and flex test this thing is very rigid feels a lot like a tank i don't believe that it's all metal it's kind of hard to tell what it's made out of for the keyboard deck and bottom it might be metal or really high quality rigid plastic the top deck on the back of the laptop, definitely metal here. For sure, this is metal. But this kind of looks like metal, but I think it's high quality plastic. Um, in that sense, it's not a bad thing, I don't think, because this doesn't transmit heat as well. And the, that means the wrist rest actually stayed really cool, even when gaming for extended periods of time. Giant thumbs up. Downside, trackpad, plastic, not as smooth, and likely might have damage over time if you use this for many years using it a lot, because uh, you'll eventually kind of wear the plastic down a little bit. Uh, but overall, the trackpad works well, clicks well, but it's not as big as some of the other laptops you can buy. Um, the keyboard is absolutely excellent from a usability and format perspective. You got all kinds of buttons from volume, brightness, mute, play, uh, pause, play, two sets of home end, page up, page down, a number pad, and arrow keys that are set down below the rest so you can feel them very easily. I love that. Um, removing the bottom 
was easy. I actually had to do it twice because I forgot to plug the battery back in, but I did it in like, I don't know, I guess in about two minutes to plug the battery back in. Very easy to take, I think it's about 10 screws out and then use a little uh, tool like this. It comes right off in about 10 seconds, 15 seconds to get it to pop off. It works great. Internal upgradability, two M.2 SSDs. And then we have our Wi-Fi card, our RAM accessible uh, battery, is removable if you want to swap that out at a later time 80 watt hours speakers definitely was not impressed visually when we opened the bottom of the laptop up and i was not impressed when we actually tested them they were not very good speakers they were almost no bass the mids were barely there the highs were also not very clear and barely there that said when we got into some games I did have to turn the speakers down because it got pretty loud. So that was good, I guess, but I don't expect high quality audio from here. You'll have to use external speakers or headphones if you want high quality audio. Um, and that's just, you know, that's a fact. Webcam quality, pretty good color replication, not very good detail, a lot of fuzzing of my beard in the photos. Uh, video audio was, did not pick up the keyboard typing, but the audio did not seem very clear, but it's hard to tell because we're using the onboard speakers to hear and listen. And the speakers, as we know, is not very good. Um, display test. We tested 384 nits with the display color checker. And I think it was around 358 nits with the Spider 5 Elite. Very good, which is way better than I thought we were going to get. Giant thumbs up. Awesome to see. Because it's a brighter screen, it makes it more usable in outdoor environments or brighter indoor environments, so that's very good. The color gamut on the display tested about 100% sRGB, which is not a problem. Like it's 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 very usable display. But if you're trying to go for a, you know, a designer laptop where you're going to do video editing, photo photographs, graphic designing, you know, like you really want to have 100% DCI P3 color gamut because that more represents the color space that the high end TVs, billboards and displays are going to portray your content as, which might mean you might miss out on certain types of colors that you missed because you only had 100% sRGB. That said, you still can do editing and video editing and all that. Just know that it's not going to be as color accurate and as color deep in the display color gamut. Contrast ratio was also not that good at only 780 to one. Lenovo Vantage, very good software for overall customization of your laptop, control of your laptop, updating your laptop. Uh, you have control of the battery, the fan profile curves, the power limits on your CPU and your GPU, as well as your dynamic boost controls. You got default overclocking. That's a one click overclock. That'll boost your performance on your laptop five to 10%. Uh, you got CPU undervolting. Uh, as long as you have the HX processor lineup uh, with the i7 and the i9, at least I'm pretty sure those both have that. Uh, and then you also have uh, battery conservation mode, which allows you to keep it at 80% or lower, which is great for long-term use of your lithium ion battery. And there's other customizations in the little advantage software that I showed you, such as customizing your backlight on the keyboard, which is only a four zone backlight. And it's not that great or cool looking in my opinion. Um, if I got this laptop, I would either set it to be a one solid backlight or a four zone static like this, because the animations I don't think look very good. Sadly, downside to this laptop speakers and RGB implementation, both could be improved. Most value gamers are willing to live with those downsides and still have a great laptop experience with this machine for fan noise. Very good fan noise, 55 decibels at max fan, but on performance mode with basically the same performance as max fan, we we're only doing uh, 49 decibels. And when we were at max fan, we were below 70 degrees. We were in the 60s, like mid 60s, 65 to 68 degrees on the CPU and the GPU, absolutely phenomenal thermal temps. And then for the performance mode, we were in the mid to low 70s at at peak performance. I mean, it's hard to complain about these temps and the performance was absolutely solid. No thermal throttling, no up and downing. The GPU and CPU pretty much in any of the games that we saw overall was very good thermal performance in times by. Now, in actual gameplay, when we have the CPU ramping hard, 
we did see some CPU temps go up into the 80s or 90s. Again, I'm not too worried about those things because the chips are designed to go that high, but if you're in a hot environment, it may cause thermal throttling on the CPU. Like if you don't have air conditioning, you live in a 90 degree environment, you might run into more thermal throttling and that could impact CPU based performance. So please keep that in mind. Quiet mode, we actually did some testing in Baldur's Gate 3 over 100 FPS in Baldur's Gate 3 on quiet mode. It was fantastic, 150 FPS when we were in performance mode. So that's a pretty significant uh, jump, 50% more performance in performance mode. But I mean, quiet mode, no fans. If you're looking for a great audio experience, eh, that could be a nice advantage, except that the speakers on this aren't really that good. So pros and cons. Um, but if you, want the if you want the laptop to not make much noise, then it's, it's a good amount of performance, even when the fans are barely running. They're barely audible. And yeah, in, in, in quiet mode fan in Time Spy, we only added, I think, a half a decibel. So we went from 41 decibels for our baseline up to 41.7 or something like that with quiet mode. So fans barely adding noise in quiet mode. Performance mode, the fan noise was, I think, about 45 decibels, which is very good for a performance mode. Uh, yeah. Very good. A to 64 RAM speed test and Crystal Disk Mark both had good performance, over 7,000 read, 2,000 write uh, for Crystal Disk Mark, and about 70,000 read, 60,000 write for A to 64 memory speed and 100 for our nanoseconds for our latency. It's pretty good. Pretty good memory, very good SSD speed. It's kind of overkill, quite frankly. You don't really need that fast of an SSD to do anything. Pretty much. I mean, video editing aside, maybe with like 8K footage or something, that'd be about the only situation I think you might want fast SSDs like that. Cinemage R23, we got 24,100 for our highest run, but we were consistently getting over 23,500 or so, uh, even with HW Info open. Uh, 140 watts power pull is phenomenal, but we were ramping the temps all the way up to the 97 degree thermal throttle range. So if you're after running the you know, not going to that high of a temp, you'll want to down the power limit down to say 100 or 120 or whatever you feel comfortable with in custom fan mode because you can customize it to be exactly the power limit that you want for the temperatures you want. If it was me, I would let it run free because I don't, I'm not threatened by 97 degree temperatures because the chip is designed to run that hot all the time uh, by Intel. They've tested it. They know it's can run for a long, long period of time at that temp without running into any issues. So, uh, but overall, Cinebench R23 performance for a $1,300 to $1,500 laptop, depending on whether you get it at retail or on sale, absolutely phenomenal. Like, it is some phenomenal CPU performance for your money. Uh, it does not get too much better than that, uh, unless you get like a 4050 with an i9 or something for the same money. That'd be the only situation I can think of where you're going to get more CPU performance for your money. Um, time spy over 13,000, 13,100 for our GPU score, 16,000 for our CPU score. Just great. Phen phenomenal. I think that's the highest RTX 4070 test score I think I've done. It's rare to get it over 12,500 and we got it over 13,000. So that's fantastic. Uh, we were ramping, like I said, very high on the wattage for the 4070, though our CPU boost clock was not really going that much higher. So maybe if you overclock it more, it'll be worth going to that high of a TDP. But generally speaking, we're gonna get the same performance on a 115 watt RTX 4070 as we did in this 140 watt 4070, because it's kind of just generating more heat and not really giving you any more performance, uh, unless you overclock it further, because we were overclocking it. That that score, that time spy score, was an overclock score. 150 slash 200 for the overclock on the GPU. Uh, and it was just the default overclock box in Lenovo Vantage that we had ticked. Now for Apex Legends, we had 1% lows that were higher than our screen refresh rate of 165 hertz. 2560 by 1600 resolution for all of the games tested. Uh, and we generally run DLSS on quality, gaming on ultra, unless it's an esports game, in which case we usually will go to the low settings, except for Counter-Strike 2, which we did on very high for some reason. I don't know, because usually I think it's easier to run. But actually, you probably would want to go to the medium or high settings in Counter-Strike 2. Helldivers 2 ran surprisingly really, really well. Um, better than my Blade 18. It must be because it's CPU bound or something because dang, 
uh, like 80 to 90 FPS with very good 1% lows in Helldivers 2 um, on the same settings that my Blade 18 usually gets 75 to 85 FPS. So I think slightly higher with this one, I think because the CPU can just ramp to a higher level. Inside of Counter-Strike 2 and in Apex Legends, no ghosting. We have G-Sync on here, ran phenomenal. Uh, no screen tearing, no ghosting, very fast responsive display, great for esports gamers, but a 240 hertz display will perform better. A little bit smoother, a little bit more responsive. Illuvium, I really hope Illuvium gets optimized further because we had uh, quite a few stutters, 1% low stutters <clears throat> as assets were loaded in. Uh, and that's due to textures as well as just, I think game optimization is needed for better game optimization is needed, especially for lower end hardware. Overall, Alluvium was very playable and very good even on Epic settings and DLSS on, I think, balanced or quality. God of War on Ultra, 75 FPS at QHD. And I think we went to 120 on original settings. It was very, very good on original. Uh, I would probably recommend doing original if you wanted to have the smoother gaming experience. Cyberpunk 2077 struggled. It was a struggle city. VRAM running out. Uh, eight gigs was not enough in Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, even on low, we were still stuttering a little bit, but it was way better on textures on low. Uh, with ray tracing turned off, I think that would also help reduce the demand on the VRAM. So probably doing that would also help boost our performance. All of that said, with enough optimization, smooth gameplay at QHD with DLSS on like performance mode is possible, but ultimate high-end gaming on really demanding AAA titles at QHD resolution, I really recommend a 4080 or a 4090 if you wanna be able to turn all the bells and whistles on. With a 4070 like this, even though it's really well-tuned and really high performance, some of the games you're gonna to need to turn the settings down to medium or ray tracing off, for example, if you want to really maximize your gaming experience and have super fluid gameplay in every game. Um, and that's just gonna require a slightly more advanced user who knows what they're doing, or at least can hit the overall graphic settings go lower button, which is really not that hard. So uh, it's certainly possible to do. Dead Space, 75 FPS in our average FPS on Ultra, QHD, 1% low was not great at like, I think 27, but Dead Space always has terrible 1% lows and the game play still feels pretty good. So I think it's a bug with the frame time graph or something. I don't know. Starfield, 100 FPS at the beginning. I think it went down to like 85 FPS by the end of the test. Very good 1% lows, very smooth gameplay. FSR3 doing a great job, but adding input lag. So might wanna up the FPS to reduce that input lag. Um, yeah, I probably would. I'd probably put it to like high settings because we were on Ultra, Starfield, Ultra, 4070, QHD, and we're playing, getting playable frames. Love it. Because at Starfield launch, that would have been like 30, 40 FPS. Huge stride forward. Huge stride forward for the Starfield dev team. Congrats to them for optimizing the game. Like how it should have been when it launched, in my opinion. Baldur's Gate 3, excellent. 150 FPS. Uh, and surprisingly, very good, not too many stutters, switching between players and ending turns, which is rare for Baldur's Gate 3. Still had some, but it was much better than most. Most go down to like 30 FPS. I think we were getting like 60 FPS for a 1% low stutters. I don't know. It was weird. Witcher 3, not enough FPS with ray tracing enabled. Uh, I think we were doing like in the 60-ish range, 60 to 70, not great but not awful, but it's not good enough with frame gen enabled because you really want over 90. Um, overall, turning off ray tracing, boom, 100 FPS, great gaming experience, absolutely fantastic. Uh, yeah, so with all the games that we tested, all games were extremely playable with a little bit of tweaking in some of them. The primary issue, of course, being VRAM demands causing 1% lows, stutters in... Cyberpunk 2077 and Alluvium were the two biggest offenders on that, but I'm sure we'll see more games if you tested a bunch more games. So be prepared to turn the textures to medium, maybe high, maybe low, depending on the game, to be able to get smooth gameplay. And yeah, I mean, there's very little to complain about this laptop. Can I recommend it? Yes, 
absolutely. Like, especially if you get it on sale, even when it's not on sale at the full $14.99 price point for this config, it's still a very good buy compared to most other laptops with a 4070 in it. So uh, I think the primary caveat I would say is that in general, I'd recommend graphic designers, creatives to get a 100% DCI-P3 color gamut display if they're gonna spend $1,500, because it is possible to get that display uh, in that price point. But uh, if you're not gonna you do professional graphic color work, this display is good enough for most gamers and you're, it's fast enough and it's high resolution and the performance is there as long as you're willing to do the work tweaking the game settings. If you don't wanna do the work tweaking the game settings, just get the more powerful Legion Pro 7i with a 4080 and spend some more money. Uh, Cause then you don't have to change anything and you can have playable frames in every single game and pretty much never run out of VRAM and it's just a little bit better experience. But you can get almost the same experience with slightly lower settings with this guy for a lot less money. So yeah, Legion Pro 5i, fantastic. Overall laptop with some glaring flaws, mainly being speakers, plastic trackpad, color gamut on the display, and that's about it. Everything else is pretty fantastic about it. So yeah, that's the Pro 5i. Uh, thanks so much for watching this review. Please like, subscribe, uh, and come back for more. I do try to check comments pretty frequently. I don't do it all the time, but I do answer hun I do answer thousands of comments a year. So uh, please feel free to leave a comment and I will do the best I can. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon out. Huzzah.